So here we are, part two of this tutorial series, which some of you properly nagged me for, so thanks for that. Anyway, as the title would suggest, let's get into pop-up nodes. Uh, these are a lot more straightforward than all that crazy messy stuff that I went into last time, so let's get going with the base pop-up node. Uh, so if I just create it, you might realize that when I create it, uh, it <clears throat> doesn't actually have any fancy graphics of its own. And that's because it really only exists to hold some logic that is utilized by the rest of these uh, nodes, uh, these ones here. Uh, but if you want to, you can add your own logic, and you can put up, you can put children like sprites. If I do that here, uh, and I add something like "Hello World," then this will pop up at the same time as the pop-up. So um, I'll also put a built-in script. Uh, which should be easy enough and I'm just going to put a tool button next to it so that we can do, so if you just call this pop uh, and we put this towards the center uh, when we go here we can see nothing happens because we haven't connected the signal or anything but basically uh, um, the pop-up node implements a few uh, interesting behaviors so by default, this node will stay hidden, even if we uh, reveal it here. When we actually launch it, it'll be gone. Um, so we need to call a pop-up function, and that is literally just, in this case, pop-up. Uh, and if we press the tool button when it's connected and everything, and we press this, it should pop up. Uh, and it'll reveal the node. That's really nice. So there are a few other things here. If you notice, if we do pop up and then an underscore, we see there's some other stuff here. Uh, these are quite useful, but I'll wait until we get a little bit more of an interesting node to deal with before we get into that. So uh, the next thing that all of these pop up nodes have is an about to show signal. So basically this will call or the signal will be emitted whenever the node is about to pop up. So when I press this, you know, I can generate some data for the label, or if you have like a bunch of stats here, you could like, uh, um, when you press the button, you could just load the stats in there, so you don't have to be loading them all the time. This is super useful, um, and yeah, I, I would recommend using or making use of that. There's a pop-up hide function, which is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it just, it just happens whenever the pop-up is hidden. Uh, so that's about all for the base pop-up node, so let's move on to the more interesting ones. So I guess that would be the window dialog, which is just a child. So you can see here we've still got this label. I'll remove the label for the time being, since now we have some fancy graphics on its own. And this one's pretty simple. I mean, basically all this does is make a pop-up node with uh, a nice panel body bit and then a little uh, title bar here with an X to close it. So we can change the window title, we can say window, even though that probably doesn't fit. Uh, pop up, okay, well one other thing, whenever I change the type, it does disconnect the signal. So just gonna make sure that's not so yeah, pop up, window. Uh, you can actually click on this and you can drag it around, which is quite fun. And it looks like it's automatically resized to fit the title text. Um, but yeah, if we press the X, it'll disappear. And we can just keep doing this because these are effectively inverse actions is just being hidden it's not really being deleted or anything um, so yeah now that we have this we can change this pop-up function and we can start with pop-up centered and basically even if we have this thing all the way over here or something where it shouldn't really appear once we do pop-up centered on it it'll appear in the center of the window exactly in the center of the screen uh, and this is really useful if you want just a quick notification to come up uh, that's very very useful uh, I would make use of that a lot. Um, and we also have pop-up centered min size, and I don't really know why you would use that, but basically the idea is that it takes in a vector to quantity and it'll just specify the minimum size. So you can do like, if I want this to be a minimum of 200 by 200, you put it in like that, you'd run it, you pop it up, and now this is a minimum of 200 by 200. If it's bigger than this, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't shrink it. It only grows it if it's smaller than that. So that's pretty good. And lastly, one that I actually quite like is pop-up centered ratio. And again, these functions apply to any pop-up node. Um, so this one you can have like 0 0.5. And what this does, it does the pop-up centered function, but it also scales it based on 
a float value which is the proportion of the screen so if I set this to 0 0.5 uh, every edge will be halfway between the center point and the corresponding edge of the screen so you can see this here if I do this you can see if the center is here and the edge is here this edge is just in the middle of this line you, th you can say from the center of the screen same in this axis same like that same everywhere so that's really also very useful if you just want to scale it up uniformly like that uh, yeah very good stuff so uh, let's move on to another pop-up um, and you might in fact notice that there is another child node on this window dialog and this is called accept dialog so that's right we get to go another layer down uh, so this one is super simple again it basically gives you a predefined layout for an OK button uh, and a little alert message and it gives you some really helpful signals and functions so uh, I'm pretty sure this X here is a glitch because I use the change type thing which isn't very smooth so that should be fixed if I just close that and I open it again um, and it's hidden of course but there we go now it's working so I'll probably have to do that a few times because um, every time I change type it'll keep certain elements like the buttons and stuff will be preserved when they maybe shouldn't be so it's not a big deal I mean if I were to run it everything would go back to normal anyway but yeah anyway so here basically the same but we have an OK button here which will close it and not only that this OK button will run this confirmed signal so if we wanted to say well when you when you press OK then you, you know, do something you can run the signal here uh, and there's also a custom action signal which will uh, omit with the name of the action as an argument uh, whenever we perform a custom action now I'll explain what a custom action is uh, if we go into the script uh, script here we can say there is an actual a very rad method called add button uh, and this we can well I'm pretty sure there's an add button method uh, we can do um, hello uh, let's do that should be fine honestly I think that's all we need to supply there we go we have a button called hello and at the moment it doesn't do anything um, but we can specify whether this is towards the right or the left if we put true it should be on the right hand side of okay there we go so we just swap them around and we can also specify the custom action um, greet so if we press this button it'll actually run if we press this button it doesn't do anything but it would emit this signal with the action as greet which we specified up here and that's really really useful um, so yeah but in case that's too annoying for you and you really want something even simpler then there's another very helpful function called cancel add cancel which takes in the text to display so let's say cancel this stuff man that's probably way too long but the point is that it'll take in that text and it will just add a button uh, which will cancel it it'll basically hide this dialog window without using without emitting the confirmed um, signal because there's a signal if you press OK it emits the confirmed if not it just cancels it so that's also very useful um, however there is more um, not for accept dialog but there is another one if you go to accept dialog you go down to confirmation dialog and wow we have this crazy stuff well basically this isn't that crazy if I just remove that for now I just restart the scene uh, you will notice this is basically the same as what we had before but with a cancel button already there uh, and that's just again a little a little bit of helpful stuff however wait a second something's not right here you're telling me that there is another layer to this one that's why I really am telling you that um, th we've got the file dialog to deal with and this one's a little bit more involved still um, so you can see here that I didn't save it so god damn it one sec um, when I reloaded the scene okay there we go so here is our file dialog and this is a little bit more complex it actually allows you to navigate some you know directory structure stuff and select a file which is super neat to have already implemented by the engine um, so you can see here there's all this stuff it looks like it's using Godot 2 UI elements but yeah the point is everything's good um, so the, let's go to the properties since there are some pretty interesting properties here actually uh, the first of which or the first interesting one is mode 
Uh, and this, you might notice if we open this, it's at save right now. If we open this, uh, we can like go here and press save and it gives us this file exists overwrite stuff. And that's basically like a preset. So when we, it's like we're saving a file, we can call it something, you know, it doesn't actually do anything because we've not connected any signals or any logic yet. But basically the idea is that if there's no file with this name, it'll put up no fight. If there is a file with this name, it'll uh, make sure that we know what's going on. So that's pretty useful. There's also open one, open many, open folder, and open any. So let me just step through these. Let's do, do open one for now. But basically open one means open a file. Open many means open multiple files. Open folder means select a folder. And open any means open either a folder or a file. Um, so it's set to open one for now. And I can just show you that this is a little bit different to how save looked. Uh, basically open is there. It opens it no matter what. It doesn't put up a fight. Very nice. Uh, and that's, that's very useful. So next there is the access property, which there's a few options here, which basically uh, it does what it sounds like. It designates what sort of file, what, so, uh, what sort of area this file dialog should be allowed to access. So as far as I'm aware, allowing it to access resources won't make it work when you try to export. Uh, or it'll start breaking when you export it and you try to access resources because all the resources are basically already compiled. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend using this one. But user data and file system are both pretty good. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the big difference between user data and file system is that file system has this thing here which allows you to select maybe multiple disks, uh, multiple like preset things. So it'll um, see here there's all this different stuff. So these are my external drives. Uh, these are just some presets. So if I go to pictures, there's a bunch of pictures here. Um, so that's basically the big difference there. User data, we'll keep this user prefix on here. Um, but basically, you can still access all the same stuff, at least on Linux you can. I don't know about Windows, since Windows is a little bit different. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, there's also filters. And what filters allow you to do, you can um, actually add, like, um, if you only want the user to be able to select like .png files or you know .txt files or something, you can do that super easily uh, just be, by using that. Uh, similarly, you can actually opt to show hidden files, and that might not work on Windows because I know there's weird permission stuff. But uh, yeah, whatever. And you can you can set the current directory, you can set the current file, you can set the current path. There's all this uh, good stuff here, which is you know very easy, very intuitive to use. I'm sure you'll get the hang on it. Similarly, it implements a few very lovely signals, uh, like file selected uh, or uh, directory selected, which is this one, which just passes the uh, directory location as a string. File selected, file selected. Again, basically the same thing. This one has a single string. This one has an array of strings. Very easy stuff. And that's genuinely all that there really is. Uh, and it allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, so now that that's done, we can move on to the next pop-up node, which is pop-up dialog. And if I save this and close it, because you can see all these buttons are still here when they shouldn't be, um, this one is basically just a panel with the pop-up node. And this is, but just spoiler alert, this is pretty much the same as pop-up panel, except it's slightly darker for some reason. I don't really know why that is, but either way, they're both pretty much the same. Uh, the next, well, the last big one is a pop-up menu. Uh, and I just definitely did the wrong thing there, um, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not using that so much anymore, I guess. Um, the point is, this pop-up, this uh, pop-up menu, as seen. Let me just call it pop-up menu here. Um, this one is a little bit more involved. It's basically a context menu. So if you right-click on something and you want the options like copy, paste, select, all that kind of thing, you'd be using like this. This is made in presumably pop-up menu nodes. Um, and honestly the signals aren't very complex. Uh, I know the properties are very complex and it's hide on certain things happening. The signals are very easy. These two both are just ways to point to uh, whatever option was selected since it would basically be each of these options. And there are a bunch of functions in the documentation like loads of them and I won't get into them um, very much. I won't like get into explaining what each of them are um, but because they are very simple, especially when you actually like, read them. They're basically check boxes, like radio buttons, uh, items to select. 
it's very simple and um, I'm not going to explain it would take way too long and honestly you probably wouldn't even take it in the best way to learn that is just to do it yourself I'm not just being lazy um, but like if you have any questions if anything's confusing then just ask me in the comments because like nothing here should be particularly confusing in this in this um, uh, set of set of functions uh, and that's that's pretty much it so that's that's really easy um, and yeah there we go I've covered in reasonable detail all of the pop-up nodes uh, you guys asked for it and I delivered it because I'm just that kind so yeah thanks for watching and stay tuned for more very lengthy tutorial videos I mean I assumed that this one would be like 10 minutes because there aren't even that many nodes here but it turns out a lot more complex than I thought so um yeah, I mean, how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I mean, that's 8. Uh, I guess part 3 will be on buttons, which is a bit nicer. Uh, still a lot of nodes, actually, here. But yeah, they're a lot nicer. Uh, I use them a lot, so that'll be good. Uh, goodbye.